I'm Michael Kimbrew. I'm a filmmaker. Um, tons of love, doing hard time. There's a few movies I got under my belt. I'm, when I'm sitting at home, I like to check out Human Mill Magazine. Human Mill Magazine is the business. Trust me when I tell you that. It's not a better urban, up-to-date site. Just going to let you know what's going on in Hollywood and who's the guy you should be checking for. Human Mill Magazine. Check it out. Michael Kimbrew. Peace. The Humor Mill Magazine here with director, producer, even sometime actor, Michael Kimber. Mike, how you doing? How you doing, man? How you doing, man? Nice meeting you, Thanks brother. Thanks for having me, man. No Thank problem. You. First thing I want to ask you, man, is I know you did a film, and but we're going to get to the film portion in a second. Mm -hmm. How did you even come up with the concept to say, I want to make my own film and then distribute it and try to start from scratch that way? How did that come about? Uh, I came up with the concept from um, being in the entertainment business for, I've been in it for a few years now. And it's just common sense that you have to take control of your own destiny. You can't sit around and wait on somebody to put you in a film. If you really want to be in a film, then hey, get up and go create your own film. So I adapted that concept, a concept which I learned from Master P. Um, studying Master P for so many years, watching him, he took the bull by the horn. So I said, well, hey, if I'm going to be in the film business, I'm going to take the bull by the horn. Right. So how did you get into the business? How did that happen? Uh, I got into the entertainment business. Um, I used to do stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. um, I started, I was uh, opening act for Eddie Griffin for a few years, and he took me out on the road with him. And I was, Nick Cannon and I were good friends. We, he and I used to do audience warm-up together at um, Nickelodeon, like telling jokes to the audience and whatnot. And just knowing people in the business, is just, it's pretty much who you know. And the way you get to know people is by being in there. So I was just in there, and I met people, and here I am. Okay, now the film. The name of the film is? Uh, it's called Tons of Love. Mm -hmm. Tons of Love, go get it. Let's go move. And can you explain to the audience out there what Tons of Love is all about and who's starring in it? Uh, yeah, well, what it is, it's, it's, it's a comedy. It's a romantic comedy. It's an African-American romantic comedy with um, some of the comedians you've seen on Def Comedy Jam. Uh, Capone is in it. He hosts Showtime at the Apollo. Gerald Kelly, very funny upcoming comedian. A um, bunch of faces you've seen. Um, I came up with the idea as I was looking back at, um, I was doing my research. And in order to know where you're going, you got to know where you came from. So I was just looking at films, um, successful people prior to me, such as the Hutland Brothers, Robert Townsend, uh, guys who've had success. And they all started with a very small, low-budget comedy with very talented people. So that's what I grabbed that concept. I said, okay, well, let me get some very funny comedians that you haven't heard of yet. It's not Chris Tucker. It's not Martin. But these guys are as equally as funny as those guys. You just haven't heard of them yet. So it, let me give them a vehicle. Um, so I came up with the idea, a friend of mine named Alton Glass was a very good writer. He and I sat down and we said, hey, let's make it a comedy about some guys dating. Everybody can relate with that. And it just ran from there, man. It was a blessing. It was a true blessing. All right. So how long did it take you to write it and come up with that to actually get it from the beginning to the actual distribution date? How long did that process come to? Uh, all together, it, it's normally like a one and a half, it's like an 18 month progress. It took me a total of from the day I said, hey, I'm going to do this to the day it hit the shelf. It took um, exactly 13 months. 13. Exactly, 13 month process. Okay, now it's the, it's the hottest thing on the streets right now in New York City, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what is the planning process from this point forward to let everybody out there know? Now, besides just doing press with us, how are you going to let everyone else outside to know about Tons of Love? What are your plans? Well, first of all, I believe in the grassroots um, process mm -hmm. where you, you got to start from the bottom and then work your way up to the top. So I'm going to hit the, the bottom. I'm going to go into, the, like I said, there are comedians in the film. So I'm going to have them on stage every night in all the comedy clubs all over the country talking about the movie, promoting the movie. Um, obviously, via MySpace, the web, we're going to promote it as much as possible you know, through those outlets. Um, I'm going to run a few commercials. I'm going to get some commercials running just to tell people about it, that it's out there. Um, and just really just this groundwork man it starts with the street you gotta start in the streets you make the streets happy you you're pretty much gonna win because the streets love you then everybody else is gonna love you so I'm, I'm going straight for the streets with this that's true let's switch gears a little bit mm -hmm. how does a person like yourself get the funding to make their own film a lot of filmmakers out there are not where you are with your first film out how mm -hmm. did you get to that point uh, that's, that's a very good question and that's a question are you up and coming people who want to be filmmakers even in the entertainment business should know Financing is a very important part of getting a movie done. Anytime you see a movie, I don't care if it's Titanic or if it's um, Pootie Tang, mm -hmm. that movie cost a lot of money to get made. Somebody had to go secure the finance and the money to get the movie made. Well, once again, I applied the common sense business concept. I'm like, okay, I'm going to need X amount of dollars to do this movie. 
once I figured out what I wanted to do. I'm like, okay, well, I gotta obviously raise the money to do it. Um, so I just took the concept of how would you raise money to go open a McDonald's? How would you raise money to go open a hat shop or a rim shop or anything? How would you raise the money? Investors, you gotta find somebody willing to invest in that idea. So, okay, got that concept. So, investors are growing trees, they're everywhere. Everybody who has money is looking to make more money. That's mm -hmm. called an investment. So, okay, I figured that one out. So, I have a very good agent, my agent Larry Williams, and I sat down, we put a package together, and we said, hey, we're gonna send this package out to investors. And that package consisted of everything I'm sitting here telling you. It consisted of the actors I wanted. How many days it was gonna take me to shoot it. Um, and anytime somebody gives you money, an investor, the first thing they wanna know is, how am I gonna get my money back, and how quick am I gonna get my money back, and how much more are you gonna give me plus what I gave you back? Mm -hmm. So if you can prove that to the investors, which Larry and myself felt like we did, um, we just once we found the investors, we showed them, hey, if you give us X amount of dollars, here's how we're gonna pay you back, and here's when we're gonna pay you back. Mm -hmm. So that's just that's something you all need to know. Anybody who wants to be a filmmaker or wants to even be in the record, whatever business you want to be in, capital is very important. You have to raise finance, and nothing in life is free, that's nothing true. at all. That's true. But you you raised the money, you mm -hmm. made the film, mm -hmm. and. Number two comes along, which is distribution. How did you get together a distribution deal to distribute your film? All right, um, that's another good question. Distribution is a very another important factor after financing. Once mm -hmm. you get financing, then you got to figure how am I going to distribute this? Meaning to those of you who aren't really familiar with the term, mm -hmm. how am I going to get this movie to the world? That's mm -hmm. what that means. How am I going to get the whole world to see this movie to where it's not just a movie I shot and sitting on my shelf? That's called distribution. It's something very important that everybody should have. Uh, once again, same concept. Distributors grow on trees. They're everywhere out there. A distribution company is just a company that's trying to make money. Mm -hmm. So if you got a product that's a good one, which my film, I consider a good film, if you got a good product, it's kind of easy to get the distributor to say, hey, let me distribute that for you because they're going to take a percentage off of that. They're going to make money if it makes money. So if the product is hot, distributors are more inclined to want to take it on. If it's not a good product, distributors aren't going to be inclined to take it on. Have you turned down any distribution deals that come your way? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've turned down quite a few. Yeah. And the reason why I ask this is because there's not that many black distribution companies out no, there. No, not at all. There's, there's only one actually called Black. Is mm -hmm. obviously the only one I can think of off of my head. Uh -huh. Now, I don't want to get into too many technical terms of why you turned them down, but as a filmmaker yourself, are you looking for certain points for a distribution deal that you can talk about? Yeah, 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 most definitely. Um, once again, it goes back to financially. First of all, it has to financially make sense because, like I said, I'm on the hook to my investors. I have to pay them back. Right. So I can't enter into a distribution deal that's not going to allow me, a number one, to make money and to pay my um, um, investors back. Right. So that, that's very important when finding the right distributor. So some of the deals that I have turned down um, weren't good enough for me and my investors financially. It didn't make financial sense to myself or my investors. So it was only financial? Yeah, right? yeah. Everything is financial with this. Everything comes down to finance. That's some people, and I stress that a lot because I meet a lot of people who want to be in the business and their mentality is, I just want to blow up. I just want to blow up. I'm like, say you want to be successful. Why don't you say that? Blow up is not an option. Well, the reason why I ask is because being a black filmmaker with black distribution out there, mm -hmm. and there's not that much of it, being, once again, a filmmaker, you saw a path that you could get there, so was that path bumpy, smooth, because you're black, and black distribution company, black film, was, you know what I mean? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was ten times harder because I was African American. It, it, it was definitely harder being an African American filmmaker. Um, because like you said, there, aren't, there are very few African mm -hmm. black distributors. So yeah, it, it was a headache, man, I'll be totally honest with you. It, it was no walk in the park whatsoever. It was very hard, very, very hard. Well, let's move on. Mm -hmm. What you got up coming next that you can talk about? Um, I have, on top of Tons of Love, which um, is out right now, I have another film that I shot called The Mansfield 12. Um, the director of Blue Hill Avenue, Craig Ross Jr., is a very good director. He directed this film. It's a prison film. It stars Candyman, the guy that played Candyman, Mr. Tony Todd, a few other um, Joe Torrey, a lot of actors that you've seen. And it's a very good piece. It's along the lines of a Shawshank Redemption. And once again, it's another urban film that um, I financed, I produced myself. Um, I got a horror movie that we're in talks with right now with BET, and hopefully everything goes right with that. It's called Marco Polo. And it's a spin on the, the water game that we all know called Marco Polo. Uh, what I did is I took it and made a horror film out of it. And it's a very good, it's an urban film. And like I said, it was in the American Black Film Festival this last year, and it was the hottest movie in the festival, along with Tons of Love. 
I had both my films. Now I want to say that I'm the first African American filmmaker to have two movies in the American Black Film Festival at one time, yes, and the one that just passed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So five years from now, Michael's sitting back. He's made some films. He has some accomplishments. Tell the viewing audience out there what those accomplishments are that we should be looking forward to that you already know is coming down the pike. Uh, my accomplishments, well, uh, I mean, I know it's a cliche, but I'm going to say it anyway. I want to win an Oscar, of course, who doesn't? Mm -hmm. So that would be great. And I just want to continue to make really good films. Like, it's so much BS out there, so much, because we'll accept, as African Americans, we don't really get a lot. So when we get something, we embrace it. But the problem is they're not giving us a lot. So whatever they give us, we're going to embrace it, even if it's bad. Mm -hmm. We're going to embrace it. So I want to make it my business and my goal in life is to give you something good to embrace. I don't want to give you BS to embrace. So, you know, I want to give you a steak dinner. I don't want to throw you noodle soups, noodle soups, noodle soups, because they're making me money, you know? <laughs> well, can you tell your fans out there where they can check out, you know, your updates or your websites or anything else? Or? Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, MySpace. You can find me on MySpace. My, it's Michael, MySpace.com forward slash Michael Kimbrew. Um, you can always, Larry Williams is, Williams Talent Agency is my agency. You can go to his site, find anything you want to know about me. And um, just Google me, Google Michael Kimbrew, and all my stuff is on there. I'm easy to get to. I'm not one that's trying to hide. If you want to holler at me, holler at me. If it makes sense, we'll get out. If it don't make sense, don't holler at me. <laughs>